Hey, what's up guys? This is Sam, and I'll be doing the free video for Friday, October 15th, 2021. So, another week is in the books, and it was certainly a good week for the Bulls to really, really push their edge after the Fed Minutes. So this was the candle right there, where the Fed Minutes came out on Wednesday. So you had two things on that day. You had CPI, the inflation number, and you had the Fed Minutes, two perceived to be big catalysts, but really nothing new came out from that. Um, the CPI came in a little hotter than expected, but still where it was expected. Nobody was expecting the, a lack of deflation. And then the Fed Minutes actually came out and just said, hey, we're still on track to taper for no no November. Uh, they actually had a little bit of a um, kind of a dovish tint to the Fed minutes as well so uh, they kind of gave themselves a little bit of room to maybe push it back so I think the market read that pretty positively and uh, and also there was a lot of shorts that were coming into this right they were like CPI you have the Fed minutes let's let's short it let's short it again and now they're getting kind of their faces ripped off so what you're seeing here is clearly a short squeeze right how can I tell well from the inside out, you can just tell when it's a short squeeze. One, a pretty classic example of it, especially on the indices when it happens market-wide, is below average and declining volume. So if you look at the last three days, they've all been below average in terms of volume, and they've all been declining uh, pretty much since that Wednesday low. So very classical short squeeze type of dynamic here, just squeezing out everyone who shorted here, everyone who shorted all through here where were their stops probably above these highs right if you're really a diehard you're gonna have stops pretty much right about here just kinda of loosely drawing it in it doesn't really matter because look where we closed so anyone who had stops pretty much got stopped out um, and we've seen this before right we've seen this before um, in terms of the options expirations on uh, monthly options expirations. So we've seen this probably be like the seventh one in a row that's been really bullish in terms of the OPEX. Um, I think maybe September wasn't, but by and large, they've been <clears throat> short squeeze. They're basically, monthly OPEX has been a, an excuse to squeeze the shorts, and they certainly um, started early this week on Wednesday and kind of finished the job today. So where are we at now? Well, you had all these sell signals that were kicking in up here near the highs, and this, those certainly played out to the downside. Now you have a little bit of a basing pattern here, right, where if you kind of just put the, put the lines here where the previous highs are, you have this kind of double bottom thing going on here. Um, a lot of folks are calling it kind of a head and shoulders as well. It doesn't matter what you look at it as. It's a, it tends to be a bullish reversal pattern. And the main thing I want to pay attention to and the main thing that you should have on your charts if you're going to be looking at SPY this weekend is this level right here at 443.5. You can get that level by running the high to low. So run that high, run to this low. Find the 618 Fibonacci, and that's the level that you need to anchor to, in my opinion. So this is kind of the same thing I covered in the, uh, in the premium video, um, but this is probably the most important thing going into next week as well understand that this was a major point of resistance right here 443 and a half also you have the 50 day simple right there you have this previous high right there and you have this previous low right there right so major levels right uh, using roughly 443 and a half is kind of the pivot whether you lo you look at structure which is previous lows and previous highs whether you look at the moving average or whether you look at key Fibonacci levels, it doesn't matter because all of them lined up at the same place, all right here, basically in that little box right there, right? So that's kind of your over under, and today closing above that is really, really strong. Um, so I would look for a little bit more continuation. You are trying to come out of a squeeze here, and technically it has squeezed out. That red dot to the black dot is a technical fire, and you've pretty much undone all your cell signals. So you had cell signals all over here. Those remained active the whole time. You never got a false signal. And then you got this little pink arrow right near the lows. And then once you get the green arrow, it's off to the races basically. So <clears throat> how high is high? Well, the next target is 448, um, roughly about 448. But <clears throat> going into next week, I am 
looking for a little bit of a pullback only because of the fact that the intraday is so massively overbought. <clears throat> so in terms of the daily chart, this is not overbought. This has a ton of room, this has a ton of room, and the price has room to about 448 on SPY. But the from the inside out, I'm looking at an hourly chart in another screen, it's pretty damn extended, right? It traded basically three ATR hourly pretty much for the last two days, right? So does that mean we have to pull back? No, um, if something's overbought, it can certainly get more overbought. But at the end of these uh, OPEX Fridays, the monthly OPEX Fridays, we have seen the next week start a little bit with, with a little bit of volatility and a little bit of a pullback. So because this is a pretty massive short squeeze, pretty much vertical. I am looking for a little bit of a pullback next week, somewhere into the neighborhood of right about here, 442 or so. I don't think we get any further down than about 339. The closer that you could get it to the moving averages here, right around 339, the better, right? So in the event that we were to pull back, I do expect for this to be bought initially uh, because it does still have so much room to the upside. <clears throat> and uh, the earliest that I would recommend or the earliest that I would get into a buy <clears throat> would be uh, 442. Now, I wouldn't do it blindly. I would need a buy signal, at least on an hourly chart, but that's the earliest. And then the, 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 the better level would be, if, if it comes in that much, <clears throat> roughly about 439 for a buy, right? So try to hold this idea in your head of um, one, it is a bullish setup in the short term, but in the even shorter term, like the intraday, it is overbought and it could pretty easily come back in, fill some of the space here, which would set up a buy before it then makes the next decision. So I'm going to keep this video kind of simple. I just really wanted to spend a little bit of time just on one chart with you because I think this is the chart that matters the most. Um, and, uh, and I do understand that folks like stock specific reviews that tends to get a lot of traction more so than conversations like the one we just had which basically covers you no matter what because <clears throat> here's the way you play it let's say that spy pulls into 439 doesn't matter whatever stock you're looking at whether it's tesla or uh, microsoft or uh, you know a commodity stock or something <clears throat> you would use 439 as support market wide so if you would buy the spy at let's just use the number 439, then you would use that level to buy the stock that you like, right? So by reviewing the SPY and giving you the levels on SPY, you can use these levels as entries to whatever stock you like. So basically if we pull in, we're trading 439, let's say you like Tesla, you go out and you buy Tesla when the SPY is at 439, for example. So I do wanna give you some uh, stocks to look at, we're just not gonna have time to review them in this short free video. Um, but we do review them in the room and we do review them in the weekly notes for the gold for the gold room. Um, so I'm going to leave this up for just a second here. This is my super secret top momentum scan that I like to run. This is looking for daily squeezes, daily bullish um, structure, and it's looking for and the kicker is a bullish momentum setup. Right, so it's not just a squeeze, it's not just a bull chart, but it has that bullish momentum kicker. I'll leave this up for a second here. Um, you can kind of jot those down, check these out on your own, uh, and then maybe in the comments, leave us which ones you think look best. Uh, I'm gonna be doing the same, <clears throat> one second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing the same thing this weekend. I'm gonna be reviewing these stocks and I'm gonna be narrowing down this big list of uh, 30 or so stocks. I'm gonna be narrowing it down to no more than maybe five but I still need to do the work going into the weekend. So this is the scan that I'm gonna be working on. I'll give it to you today. And then in the comments, just leave us a comment as to which one you think looks good and what you're gonna be trading next week if you find something that looks good on this list. All right, guys, that is my time. I hope you had a good week. It was certainly an interesting week, uh, certainly a good week as well if you were positioned correctly. And uh, going into next week, although I do think that the market is positioned bullishly in the short term until we get the next sell signal, uh, I do think you want to still look at this bullishly until that signal happens. I also think that the best way to trade this market is to try to shorten your time frames, right? Do shorter term ideas because 
the market's been up five and then it's down five and then it's been up five and it's been down five right so it makes swing trading a little bit more difficult when that happens because you'll be up on Monday and then by Wednesday you're back to flat and then on Friday you'll be up a little bit and then on Monday you're back to flat right so instead of trying to do this long-term swing trading approach that I don't think is favorable in this particular market shorten your time frames and uh, that way if it goes up on Monday you can take your money you'll be flat if it pulls back on Wednesday and you still like it you can jump back in and you've already got the money from Monday in your account and I think that's the best way to trade it. So uh, don't forget to leave us a comment down uh, below. If you find something that looks good, let us know what you're going to be trading off of this list. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you guys find. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Don't forget to leave us a like. Don't forget to subscribe before you uh, go somewhere else on the YouTube. It really does help us with the algorithm, and we appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you for the next video. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you on Friday. Cheers. Hey guys, this is Sam, and I'm the Director of Equities at Simpler Trading. I want to thank you for watching this video, and before you go somewhere else on the YouTube, I'd like to ask that you comment and like the video. It really does help us out with the algorithm and getting the message out to more folks who like to see our content. Also, be sure to click the bell notification and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss anything that comes out. If you want to watch us trade in real time using our own money, come over to simplertrading.com and learn how to sign up. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you for the next video. Cheers.